Good afternoon, everyone. It is a beautiful, sunshiny day here, so that can only mean one thing. It is time for another episode of the Get to Know Her Show. I am your host, Monica Graves. I cannot wait to introduce our guest to you today. This is going to be exciting. And let me tell you, she has put a lot of effort into her backdrop. You will not have seen anything like this before on this show. I guarantee you that. But before I start the intro, um, I wanted to point out my perfect, simple, beautiful black top from our favorite sponsor, Brenda Bedome. Um, I'm just going to show you my top today. It is nice and long and looks great with my Brenda Bedome jeans. It's all ruched in the front here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, really nice top for the holidays. Check out Brenda's website at brendabedome.com and don't forget to use the coupon code get to know her because when you use that coupon code you're going to get 21 percent off of your order which is a fantastic savings and once again i want to thank our sponsor which if you guys don't know me besides the show <laughs> anybody who's watching. I am also uh, the owner and designer of Glam Jewels here in Burlington, Ontario. And I thought, well, Glam Jewels should be sponsoring us. Why not? So this is a beautiful little necklace I'm wearing. This is our Three Little Wishes necklace. They are $35. They are on our website. And the proceeds from the sales of these necklaces go to help a young father. He's 44 years old. He's a single dad. His name is Paul Robinson and he has a cancerous brain tumor and we are raising funds for him and his family. Uh, for those of you who have been following along, I have amazing news. Uh, we have just crossed over $2,000 raised, which was our goal. So it, now we're at the point where we are exceeding our goal. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you haven't had a chance to get one yet, please do. And you can go to our website, glamjewels.com, and uh, check out our Three Little Wishes necklace there. Now, let's introduce our guest, shall we? This is so exciting. Today, my guest is Amanda Cora. Amanda is the co-owner, manager, and guide of Thrive Tours. She enjoys being one with nature and is, in, and is known to hug a tree or two while out adventuring. Whether exploring the great outdoors, kayaking, canoeing, or hiking and taking in the sights, being in nature is one of Amanda's most favorite things to do. Her passion led her to study nature-based adventure tourism at Cabrian College, where she received her Outdoor Wilderness Guiding Certificate in 2004. Years later, with partner Brad Robinson, their company, Thrive Tours, was born. Thrive Tours is an Indigenous-owned and operated guided ecotourism company located in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario a place where you can reconnect with nature by enjoying quality experiences and adventure through guided canoe, kayak, hiking, snowshoeing, and all year round camping. In the spirit of promoting and maintaining local indigenous practices and philosophies, Thrive is adopting a zero footprint objective so that the environment will be clean and sustainable for generations to come. With all of Amanda's experience in coordinating and facilitating retreats, events, and hosting workshops, she is the perfect one to organize your next weekend with a boatload of options to customize your adventure. I am so excited to chat with Amanda about her business. You know what, if there's anything we've learned from this pandemic, it is being outside is the best thing for the soul. So let's bring Amanda on. Are you guys ready for this backdrop? Like, I think you're gonna just die. Okay, here we go. <gasps> Amanda, this Hi, is so Monica. gorgeous. <laughs> I'm so happy to Welcome. talk with you. <laughs> oh, this feels so oh, welcoming. We, 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 um, let's see here, we got the fire going. Just I love it. Here. Yes, my partner Beautiful. Brad's back there. He's, hi, Brad. Uh, he's making sure that hi. <laughs> um, he's the yard hand. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. He's he is a talented guy. We need to talk about Brad in this interview because oh, I've learned so much about him in the last half hour. He just he can do it all, can't he? Sure can. <laughs> Definitely helps us out a lot. 
<laughs> oh, this is fantastic. When you suggested doing the interview from outdoors, I thought, so the first thing I was thinking was, oh, geez, what if there's a wind or something? But, you know, then I found out all about Brad and I was like, that he, it's all going to be just fine. Yeah. You got nothing to worry we've, about. We've done lots of outdoor interviews and uh, pitches. Now with the, you know, everything coming from Zoom and um, doing things from home, it gets kind of boring when you're sitting in the same room all the time. So we like to bring yes. it outside when we can, because that is what we do is we play outside. So why not work outside while we work outside too? <laughs> oh, that's great. I love that. I know being inside, it's no, this is so great. The outdoors, like during the pandemic, it's been unbelievable. It's like we're all seeing it again for the first time, you know? because it's mm -hmm. it's such a healing place to be. So Amanda, yeah. we're going to get into all of that cuz you know so much about that stuff. But I do want to ask you, what did little Amanda want to be when she grew up? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> um it's really interesting because um my mom would have the um grow with you books and every year she would write down what I wanted to be when I grow up. So when I'm looking through all of those, um, and there was tons of options, you could have chose doctor or lawyer or teacher, all these different things. And there was a spot for other. Um, and I always was in the other section under, uh, I just want to be a mom. <laughs> so, wow. you know, it wasn't on there as an option. Um, but to me, I, I wanted to, I had that nurturing that nurturing right from young, you know, being a young person wanting to nurture. Um, and uh, so being a mom was really important to me uh, growing up. That was my my vision of, of my life was was to raise children. Um, and I've done it. Uh, they, I have five uh, children. Um, so I kind of like go big or go home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You went all the way with that. Uh, yeah. So, How old are your kids? Yeah. So I definitely checked off those boxes. Um, my youngest yeah. is eight and uh, the oldest is turning 20 uh, very shortly. So. Amazing. Gosh. And do they help out? Do they help uh, out? Yeah. I see some of them, like the, the older ones are all gone now doing their own okay. thing. Um, we have two young uh, boys here that are 12 and eight. Um, and so they were actually helping Brad uh, earlier before I came on live, uh, get the fire going, bring the firewood down. Um, so that's really nice that they're, you know, doing what they can to be helpful. <laughs> yes. So. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, so what led you to this course that you took? At, um, um, at I actually College. always have, yeah, at Cambrian, when I went to the Nature Based Adventure Tourism, I've always loved mm. being outside. It's something I did grow up in the outdoors, uh, Manitoulin. Um, I grew up in the Sudbury area. And uh, so being outdoors was a, a big part of my life. Um, and then as I got older, my first two children, I went to Guelph University first, actually, for child studies. Um, okay. I realized that I really needed to be outdoors. I felt like um, more at home when I was near water. So um, that really inspired me to learn more. I felt like I wanted to have the skills to be sufficient and um, confident to go outside and not be scared to be able to do all the things that I can do on my own. I was at first a single mom with my two girls and I, I just wanted to be able to do these things and take my kids out camping and do all the things I remember doing as a child, but didn't have the, uh, like I wasn't um, proficient in it. So I really wanted to get those skills uh, under my belt. Oh. So going to school gave me those things and just kind of grew my confidence. Uh, we got to learn all sorts of things like using a chainsaw and using, you know, different equipment. And, um, you know, we actually had a bird class, which is kind of funny. So we got to learn yeah. about birds and sounds and, uh, you know, identifying all of the wildlife and the trees and the plants and even wild edibles, which I think is super fascinating. So these are all things that we incorporate in our tours. Um, yeah. it's, it's just one part of many things that we do drive tours. Uh, but it's always interesting and people are always like, there's no idea. And really, those plants were our first food and our first medicines. And, you know, that's there we go. Are we on? Yeah, we, we are totally on. This is amazing. Yeah. Well, awesome. Start? <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so thank got, you. So, thank you, Brad. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> we were talking a lot about um, we were talking about school and all of the things that you learned and how you've taken those those things into your business. Um, so before we go into the business, because I want to dive into that and how it was born and all that stuff, but can we? Can you tell us how you met the amazing Brad? <laughs> I, like we really want to know that story. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see. What can I share? <laughs> when I was actually in school at uh, Cambridge College, um, I uh, we had a date back then. Okay. Um, so we met online and uh, we had a lot of really great conversations and I thought this is a really wonderful person. It was not the right time for either of us um, at that time and we uh, we kind of went our separate ways and we reconnected about three years ago uh, when he was working at uh, a friendship center in Sudbury and I was running another tourism company and uh, we were working together doing culture camps and programs and um, we just uh, kind of rekindled what had started, you know, 14 years ago, oh. and um, it kind of blossomed into a really great friendship, and uh, we just started uh, seeing how there was so much more there than, uh, than you know, than met, met the eye at the moment. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a really interesting thing, how life is, and it's like the seed was planted, and it just, it wasn't, we had to learn a few things before we came back together. <laughs> Yes. Oh, that's so nice. So the two of you, you sat down and came up with this business idea then. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. When I left my past, uh, my previous uh, company, um, I was a little bit uh, bummed out to say the least that uh, I had grew something to then to not have it anymore. Um, so to me, to be able to feel like, um, to thrive and not just survive, yeah. which was the idea of behind Thrive Tours. Um, it was why not still do the things that are very passionate to me. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, Brad, Brad as well as always loved being in the outdoors. And, you know, those are the things we were working on was bringing uh, youth and families out to enjoy uh, canoeing and hiking and learning in the outdoors. So it just was like a really natural thing that kind of grew from, you know, just these ideas of thriving um, and not just surviving. And uh, so that's how it was born. And I, I started Thrive Tours on my own with his uh, saying, you could do it. It's okay. You can do this just by yourself. And I did start doing it. And I was running um, women's retreats uh, on my own, uh, working, bringing, being, going out to First Nations and, and bringing my canoes and hauling them all by myself and lifting them up and uh, <laughs> going and having families. You know, we would go to lakes and I'd pull up with all the canoes and I'd unload them and bring them out. And I had um, this one family that really stands out for me that the little girl looks up to, at me at the end of the tour. And she's like, you know, my mom said we were going on this guided tour. And I pictured this tour guide with big army boots and camo pants and a beard and, and burly man. And, he's, and she's like, but you're a girl. And I said, yeah, girls can do all sorts of things. And she was just like amazed and her smile from ear to ear and i was just like okay i'm doing the right thing <laughs> that's know? fantastic how old was she she probably was like eight or nine. Oh, wonderful yeah. so wow I was like okay this is such an impact for even young you know young girls um yeah. and and as well taking out um single moms with their children they want to so badly do camping but you know, like, oh, we are just me and my boys and I, I don't know, you know, maybe I don't have the gear. Or I don't really have the mm -hmm. skills. and I just want to feel like I'm safe. Um, so Amazing. I think that was a really big attraction um, starting out is people thought, oh, OK, this is a woman who can take people out and, you know, I'm safe and she knows her stuff. And um, yeah. so it started off really great. Um, and then when when Brad decided that uh, he was ready to jump in full time. Um, it was a lot easier for me because then he carries the canoes. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. But you know what I love, love, love about this story, Amanda, is that you, you know, you took that course to empower yourself to yeah. get outside in nature and be able to spend most of your time outside, not be afraid, know how to do all the things. And then here you are, you know, passing that along to all of your clients who are coming on the tours and empowering 
you know, little girls and showing them that they can do it too. And so what a nice way to heal the little girl inside of mm -hmm. you as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. So I wanted to ask you also, why are you specifically so passionate about uh, promoting and maintaining local Indigenous practices and philosophies? Yeah. Where does that come from? Um, well, great question. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Uh, we So my own personal self, um, as a young child, I always really felt connected to Indigenous culture. I remember having a student in my class and her mom came in and talked. And it for me, it was the first time I felt like that felt like home to me, if that makes sense to you. Um, and I didn't know why I felt so connected. And um, later on in my life, I learned more about my own heritage that uh, my grandmother and her mother um, do have indigenous uh, roots of Abenaki in the Quebec area. And I still am learning, uh, but know that it was something that they didn't wanna share it was it was a secret and it was something that they adamantly didn't want people to know um, for very good reason you know they wanted to keep safe they wanted to keep their children safe and um, so these are things that are not shared down the family line um, so my grandmother is uh, passed and uh, I learned more a little bit at her funeral when they were um, showing uh, pictures and talking about it and I was just um, it made sense that I felt that connection um, and to me, uh, it's really important to keep that alive and to learn more and to share about that. And then I also have three boys that are Ojibwe. And so for the last 15 years, it's been a big part of my life to um, learn uh, and to share and to, and to keep that, um, keep those truths alive and to share mm -hmm. that. Wow, that must have been heartbreaking for you to find that out about your grandmother it 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 does but it's also like it's yeah. not a surprise i guess yeah <laughs> we yeah. actually live like where we live now um we're just two blocks down from the old residential school here in Sault saint marie of uh, shingwak um, okay uh so it's really interesting because the before i also lived in spanish and that was also close to another residential school it's like um i feel like i've i've had this calling uh subconsciously that i need to be there and we're we're this is a big part of what we do um mm. brad also is uh indigenous he's Haudenosaunee from um from the london area and uh he um it, it's a big part of what we do in thrive tours is to share that message and and to have people connect with 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 this um the truth and the history of this area and people um because it's it's very much something that needs to be shared mm -hmm. it is yeah and i and i can imagine the, the reason i use the word heartbreaking about your grandmother is just uh perhaps you have a lot of questions that you would have liked to have sit down and you know Absolutely. talk to her about and and asked her but i'm sure you feel that she's guiding you now from the mm -hmm. other side right yeah 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 and yeah. i wish there was more because i've i've uh, tried to reach out to some of my relatives and and it seems like not many people know much right now so yeah we'll we'll continue it'll be an yeah. uh, ongoing adventure let's say <laughs> that's so great so i had um a couple of things uh on your website so one of my questions what is going to be uh <laughs> what have been some of the most memorable moments you've had with guests <laughs> And you just shared a really great one. Do you have another, any others that you want to share? Kind of. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I feel like um, so that was the beginning. The the two stories that I shared with you is when I was doing you know these these uh, tours, just kind of getting my feet wet, so to speak. And uh, so then we moved to Sault Ste. Marie uh, to to launch the business in COVID. So it was lockdown. We couldn't actually Yay. do anything. So it was really <laughs> cool. <laughs> but you know. That led us to make, uh, you know, a lot of partnerships to get our feet on the ground, to settle here in the community, to to make different, uh, really wonderful connections here, and uh, we're so grateful for that. Um, so when we were able to open our doors in July, um, mm -hmm. it was like I I couldn't believe it. Our phone was off the hook, <laughs> and I was like, okay, I wasn't <sighs> expecting this. I guess we're starting tomorrow. <laughs> You know, oh, so fantastic. It, was like, it was pretty crazy, but awesome. Um, so we've had a lot of people from Southern Ontario, 
um, international uh, students, um, in uh, lots of. So what happens is people come. They're coming for the outdoor experience. They get to learn how to, so how to canoe, how to kayak, or like different things like that. But then they're getting so much more to the experience that after they're done, they're like, I just want to hug you. Like, can we, like, it's oh. so amazing because you're not just like, okay, I did the thing and now I'm going. It's like, okay, now we feel like we're connected. And it, this is the whole point is to get connected. So yeah. that I feel is very memorable. Um, because I feel like all the guests that have come through, it's like, I feel like we're all friends now. So it's like we've growing this community of people and we're creating a ripple when, yeah. you know, they may have, we've used the vehicle of being outdoors, but that's just like the vehicle to get to where we're going. You know, the yeah. big picture is, is so much more. Um, oh. So that's not one specific, but yeah, the, you know, someone recently, actually the, the weekend we had the women's retreat, we had a yeah. tour and uh, went out hiking awesome conversations like so many great things and we end uh or during our tour brad and i will actually sing so we'll bring our drum and our shaker and we sing a song and um people uh really enjoy that they they enjoy like the meaning behind it uh that we're we're sharing that you know the connection and the honor of uh what we're doing um for the children that are being found for all the re things that we're doing um and then <laughs> that's emotional for me no kidding yeah yeah but, um, oh <laughs> sorry, gosh I wasn't that, but anyway. oh man that, that's so wonderful yeah this so, is it's so big what you're doing you know you you look at this and it's like it's you and brad and you've created this beautiful experience for people but like you said that ripple effect is tremendous and you're doing it with love and kindness and honor it's just amazing like it is it feels honestly good. it feels like yeah um it doesn't feel like work that's for sure yeah but it it's um it's purpose right you're you're here exactly where you're supposed to be where it sure feels like it. It seems like everything has happened is so um, easy. It's like yeah. um, things just show up and we don't need to worry. Things will just happen the way they're, they're meant to happen. Yeah. And, you know, you meet the right people at the right time. As long as you're open and you're, you're being, you know, just bringing that energy out there. You're being kind mm -hmm. to people. You're being honest. You know, you're following those um, grandfather teachings. We, we, you know, when we make a choice, we think, are, is this following all of these teachings of honesty and, you know, truth and bravery and mm -hmm. courage, you know, all those things, then we know we're on the right path. If you just yeah. keep doing those things. That's so beautiful. And, you know, it, it it's like you're healing the people who come to see you, but you're mm -hmm. also healing yourself and your own lineage, you know? the of the people who are here and those who have passed mm -hmm. it's so it's so powerful what you're doing honestly it's just amazing thank you i feel that way yeah. too and it feels really good to be able to teach yeah. like even our children you know to change the way things have maybe been in the past mm -hmm. and seeing a new way and and healing from past things that weren't good and and now saying hey that wasn't okay before and this is how it is now and now mm -hmm. we're going to go forward and and be different in a you know go in a better way yeah and what what is the new way for you and your family amanda how mm -hmm. how do you practice this on a daily basis you know um <laughs> well um <laughs> it's about a respect yeah <laughs> so <laughs> a big thing is you know respecting yourself and respecting others respecting you know this mother earth this is a huge thing if you're following with these respecting yourself and loving yourself it's going to shine through with how you treat other people so mm -hmm. that's what we're instilling in the children amazing and can you share with us some of the ways that you teach your children how to respect themselves <laughs> because it really you know it's uh it's it's quite a new mm -hmm. way of of thinking right like it's definitely yeah. an ongoing uh a challenge not gonna yeah. lie um i think being a parent is a very hard job 
well, <laughs> especially when yeah. they can't go to school sometimes because, of you know, <laughs> where the kids yeah. are home this week because, you know, there was a case at school, so they can't go to school. And I'm like, okay, well, oh. they're not logging on because we have other <laughs> things to do. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, so I think just showing them by how we act is, mm-hmm. is really important. So you need to pretty much walk the talk. Yes. So how I speak to Brad or how Brad speaks to me, how we speak to them, you know, it has to be has to be respectful. I'm not going to do things to them, which I feel like they should, you know, don't just do what I say. You know, mm. you're going to you. I want you to do what I'm doing. So, right. you know, and, and I'm not always perfect. We're always like sometimes having a misstep and we have to be like, hey, guess what? That wasn't okay to what I did. And next time, this is how I need to do it. Or this is this is what I'm going to do next time. So um, just being really open with communication and yeah. being real and uh, learning. You know, if you don't have the answers, guess what? There's Google. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I just think it's awesome that you can, like, me and Brad will um, we'll, we'll follow different parenting um, YouTube channels that have really mm-hmm. great small videos that you can watch saying like you know if you have a a team that's not listening or you know yeah. um so i think the resources are out there so um right. to access them you can't you know i think it's good and it's not an easy job it's like the hardest job <laughs> yes exactly i know that that's why when i when at the beginning when you said i don't have kids myself and when you said all okay. i ever wanted to do was be a mom yeah. i'm like oh that's a big one that's bigger than astronaut as far as i'm I know. concerned <laughs> and i'm thinking like oh did i not get the memo back then <laughs> you know? i was the oldest of uh, four girls in my family so wow. um, I always had like there was oh and there was tons of cousins like both you know my families had lots of you know lots of siblings and cousins and and I just I think I I think I realized I like that uh, big crowd and lots yeah. of stuff going on and uh, even now like we have a great community here in Sault Ste Marie and we love getting together and we love playing music and we love singing and you know doing these things together and it's it's so good like it 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 brings my energy up. So that's, yes. you know, I'm glad I'm not an introvert. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, you're so much fun. I mean, I'm having the best time with you. We've only oh, known each other like a couple I know, hours. I imagine if you were here, <laughs> I would definitely get out uh, the cooking sticks and we would be making some bannock. So um, I know oh. we did that at the women's retreat. We made some yeah. bannock and uh, that's always a really fun thing to do over the fire. Um, oh, and we so tell like us about bring, that. Yeah. What goes into that? In the exactly? yeah, yeah, it's um, so it's like flour and baking powder, a little bit of salt. You can put a little bit of sugar in there and you mix it up, yeah. and then you add um, a fat. So I like to use butter, but you can use like a tender flake or something. Um, and then you add a little bit of liquid to get it to like a dough, mm-hmm. uh, and then you can add whatever you want into it. So you can put raisins or you know, different things like that, or um, and then or different spices. Yeah, it's really up to you. You can cook yeah. it in the oven, you can fry it. Uh, and then on our tours, we like to put it on a stick and cook it on the fire. And then you can eat it with jam or honey or. Oh, I was just going to say, <laughs> I'll bring my, my mom makes a delicious, um, like either a wild blueberry jam or a mm. strawberry jam. So I'll have to bring that with me when I come up in the summer and you can put that Very on good. it. Yeah, yes. <laughs> absolutely. And I also like it with butter. Oh yeah, butter all the way, girl. Mm. Yeah, I love butter. <laughs> I love butter makes everything better. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Amanda, can you kind of walk us through, first of all, tell us about your property and sort of what somebody can expect when they're well, they're coming through. I, I did want to ask you specifically about your Indigenous Interpretive Nature Tours. So we can t- go to that as well, but maybe let's start with the property and uh, what your setup is there. Well, we're actually yeah. just in my backyard right now where we don't do tours of my backyard. However, I have yeah. had people come here and sleep in the teepee, which is kind of fun. Yeah. Um, and then also when we had the women's retreat, we did have um, a sunrise ceremony and we did have some sacred fire going on here in the teepee and uh, the yard. So we're actually right in like the middle of Sault Ste. Marie um and we have about an acre of uh a a yard which is very lovely 
And uh, so we feel very like really happy to have this space to be able to, you know, do things and um, have interviews, you know, in our backyard, which yeah. is great. Um, we are a mobile business. So we have all of our gear. We partnered with uh, Sioux College. They have a waterfront adventure center on St. Mary's River. So okay. we have our gear at the boathouse there on the river, um, like all of our canoes and kayaks and different water things. Um, and then we are partnered with um, a whole bunch of places here in the city. And we go to all, all sorts of places. So we're not tied to one area. Um, we What I do is when people contact me, I vet them to what their interests are, what their skill level is, what kind of experience are they looking for. And then from there, I recommend X, Y, or Z. And mm-hmm. then we... Um, we would meet them at a location and uh, we would, uh, you know, we would start with our, um, you know, welcoming and teaching them about tobacco and the sacredness of it. And, you know, why we do offer it before we go out on our tours and uh, the significance of that. And um, so throughout our whole tour, so it doesn't matter where we're going, we're going to be sharing different things. We're meeting people where they're at. We're not mm-hmm. giving too much. We're not going to make you feel worse <laughs> when you leave. We want mm-hmm. you to get just enough that you're feeling like, you know, you've had some things to think about. Um, you really did it in a good way. And uh, just leave it open for questions. If people want to ask questions, we're, you know, very open to answering Um Brad is also a professor at the University of Algoma here, and he teaches Anishinaabe social issues right now. Um, so he uh, has a lot of experience, uh, even in his past roles of being a cultural resource coordinator. Uh, okay. He also went to Laurentian uh, for Indigenous Studies uh, um, as well. So he's got quite a bit of um, great education behind him and knowledge, which uh, he is a great person to share a lot of things that people may they want to ask and we also bring people in so uh, depending on what we're doing um, we have connections with the local elders of the area um, and some also people who've attended uh, Shingwak here that have come out and were, were uh, very happy to share their story with our guests and uh, have an interactive situation with them um, around a fire so it just kind of depends on what people are looking for um, some people want to just sit and talk and ask questions and that is totally fine some people just want to go and they want to paddle and they they maybe have a few things they are interested in but it's like a lot of it is being out on the water and maybe learning more about the the outdoor and the nature but we will always incorporate some of it to get them at least thinking um yeah and connecting so amazing can you tell us about the tobacco yeah so uh so the store, so the tobacco is um, one of the sacred medicines, sacred medicines, and it is uh, is seen like it's uh, it it's like part of us. So okay. all of the things that are made to grow the tobacco, like uh, is is actually what what we're made out of as well. So the idea of going out outdoors and um, going and whether we're hiking or we're on the water, it's giving back that it's. Uh, more and not just we're not just taking we're not just going and conquering the land or you know dominating we're doing it in a a way where it's um, a reciprocation so we're giving and then we're going to go and we're going to ask for safety and we're going to put in good thoughts or if we have prayers we also can put those in there Um, and then wherever we feel um, called to put down like at the base of a tree if we're going out on the water, um, they can go and put it, those thoughts in their tobacco, which we call sema here, and uh, we put it in the water. Um, so those are things that we share and have the opportunity, and we teach them about, uh, you know, why we put it in our left hand. It's closest to our heart. Um, so those are just some of the things that we do uh, here in this, uh, in the, in this territory. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's fascinating. So I'd love to learn about your uh, your nature tours, the interpretive nature tours. Yeah, so like I was yeah, so, pretty much what so, I'm explaining. Pretty much, okay. <laughs> like we we go yeah. out in the nature. So depending, yeah, 
So, like, let's say this fall, uh, yep. we did the fall colors. So, Robertson Cliffs was one of them, um, which is uh, Algoma Highland Conservancy land. And we yeah. would, you know, have a partnership with them that we take our guests up there. And there's a, you know, a nice hike up the trail. We talk about the different plants and the trees and, you know, different things that we may see on the way. And then there's a beautiful yeah. lookout. And, you know, you can see lakes all the way to Lake Superior and like the hills and, oh. you know, the valleys and the rivers. And it's just a really great thing. And then there's even peregrine falcons there. So um, that's really exciting wow. because they seem to like us. I think it's our singing. <laughs> so we go Love up it. there. We bring the drum, uh, we sing out in the peregrine falcons, they've come and they've like, kind of like, it's like they want to show off and they come oh. and they swoop by us and they like squawk away and um, it's really cool. We've had people like, they, they'll they start gathering around if, if there's other people hiking in a, yeah. in a busy time and is it okay if we video to my mom in China? Like, <laughs> we're like, yeah, I'm sure. You know, and oh. then you have people asking questions and they're just so interested. And yes. um, so, yeah, so interpretive guiding is Brad and I are both certified in that. Um, so these are those are some of the things we did during the lockdown. I love it. Is we got all of our certifications, you know, wilderness first aid, um, yeah. you know, interpretive guiding, working in the winter, working on ice, like all these things we yeah. gathered, you know, while we were waiting to be able to launch like a uh, here in Sault Ste. Marie. So. Oh, that's fantastic. I was very intrigued by the word interpretive. So, mm -hmm. you know, in my mind, I'm thinking this must be something spiritual and it must mm -hmm. be, you know, you're teaching people yeah. what the well, meanings are of different things that they're seeing in nature. And that's what we're doing. So it's yeah. not a set, like we say this and then this and then this, like we have mm. uh, these programs, I guess you could say, um, but we, and when we see it, we're talking about it and we're sharing this information to them and, uh, and it's interactive. So right. it's, uh, it's as interactive as we can, we can be, um, you know, it, and it depends on the location. Sometimes people are feeding birds out of their hands and, uh, you know, sometimes you're, 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 you're witnessing, you know, like the peregrine falcons fly by, um, yeah. and then on the water, you're seeing all sorts of things, um, on the water and on the shore and, uh, and yeah, wow. <laughs> no, actually this, this fall, Brad and I were, were camping on the side of a lake and we, we had two moose come by our tent. So that was really <gasps> wow. exciting. So we have moose here and they're very big. Yeah. Um, you, you have to go behind a big tree if they come up <laughs> near yeah. you because they're, they can be a little feisty, but, um, yeah, luckily we have wow. trees. Yes, you have trees to protect yourself. Yeah. That's incredible. I love that. And I have to say, it's, there's a beautiful, um, I think it's a photo of you on one of your reels where you're feeding a bird. You're on oh, like a, a path. It's beautiful. Yeah. And your Instagram, I mean, anybody who's watching this, they, they must follow you on Instagram. It's really well done. Oh, you know, you really... You. Yeah, you really get the sense of of what it's all about and what to expect. And, um, you know, we were talking about Brad's talents, you know, like the, the film that you're doing and everything, like just looking at the water sparkling. And it's really, really great to follow you guys because, you know, every time I look at it, I'm like, I want to go there. I want to go there. I want to be That's there right awesome. now. I'm yeah. glad that comes through on our social media. So I'm doing all the social media stuff and, uh, you know, yeah. I'm learning as I go and I continue to try to learn how to do things better. Um, mm -hmm. So that's really nice to hear that uh, it's, come, you know, it comes across as something that we're trying to show, which is great. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, just, it's pretty cool. Like we've had a lot of recognition um, as well. And uh, we just, we yeah. won four awards at the Ontario Tourism uh, summit in Ottawa recently and that video that you you know one of the last videos we posted they mm -hmm. showcased it there so that was super <sighs> exciting and uh, just really cool to see our work up on the big screen and see like a room full of operators and tourism um, you know people from all different Ontario cities and um, yeah. it, it felt really good uh, to, to see that like you work so hard and almost like you have blinders on you're just every day Okay, yeah. we get up, we, we got, you know, to do X, Y, Z, then you need to get there and then we're getting on the water and then sometimes we'd be out, you know, paddling for eight hours a day and then, you know, then you go to this and that. It's very tiring and you don't think of like, 
people are noticing, you know, all the things that you are doing. So it's yeah. really awesome to be noticed and um, to, to feel like, you know, we're doing a good job. And that's so uh, great. It's worth it. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you about the awards. So how did they find out about you? Did, did some, um, well, it was a nomination that you okay. had to fill out, um, all of the things that you're doing to, yeah. be, to be considered for the different awards. Um, and so an interesting thing. So one of the, um, head people in uh, the tourism, Ontario tourism, uh, he comes up after the awards and he says, you know, um, there was a lot of applicants this year, like more than usual, probably for whatever reason, COVID right. or something. And he says, it was, it was like, we had to go through so many to get to the finalists for these awards. And we actually got um, to 10, we were t awarded, we were in 10 categories as finalists. Wow. So, and he says, you know, it's unheard of really that you have like one company takes four, like we're competing against also city tourism corporations as well um mm. and so and i was just like i thought maybe we were the only ones that were in there <laughs> that's how i was yeah. feeling like i was like well there's no way like you know out of all of those and um to win four and uh, i think i was downplaying it quite a bit and uh so when he came up to me after at the after party and said like yeah no you don't realize how big this is you had to get through a huge pile like this just to be a finalist and then you also won four um, you're the only company oh. that took home for, and uh, he's like, it's a really big deal. So, anyways, I cried. <laughs> of course, Amanda, <laughs> like, I'm gonna cry. I'm like, wow, good yeah, for so you. That was and very exciting. Oh my god, you know, this is such a cool story because, <laughs> you know, people always they still talk about overnight success, right? <laughs> and someone would look at you and go, oh my god, they just started this business in the pandemic, and look at how far they've come already, but. What people don't see is all of the steps to get mm -hmm. you here. Even, you know, even the beautiful story about you and Brad, how you met all those years ago and you both had to go and learn whatever yeah. it was <laughs> to come back together again and to create this thing. And it's just such a beautiful um, story about trusting the process and taking your time and not rushing and that everybody's you know, ends up at their purpose in a different way, right? We can't compare ourselves to others and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And just, just like every day, just keep doing those steps. And uh, I think that's kind of the things that we're seeing. It's like, oh, all the things we did in our life, we didn't realize how it's going to lead us to where we are now because yeah. we both were super active in our own, in our own lives, you know, making connections and just doing you know, the things we kept learning, we just kept learning things. And, um, and now it's we're seeing how it's really coming into play and how important it was that we did all of those things. And to now be like, okay, there's a reason why we were doing those things. And we may not have seen the instant gratification at that time when we were volunteering or when we were doing these, you know, these things that seems like nobody really notices. But you know, and then you get to a place where it's like, okay, like that was for a reason. And, you know, yeah. you just keep doing it every day. <laughs> oh, what a reward. And what a great lesson to any entrepreneur who's watching. It's yes. Don't so give up. And also don't yeah. listen to anybody. <laughs> yeah, girl. <laughs> just exactly. listen to yourself. If it feels good, keep doing it because there's always going to be people thinking like it's not a good idea or it won't work. But if it feels mm -hmm. good to you, then do it. And if it doesn't work, then you do something else. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's how powerful we are. And, yep. you know, I I love the idea also. I think it's something that we don't do enough of. Just what we're talking about right now is sitting back and actually, like, look at everything you've accomplished mm -hmm. From when you started to where you are today and just sit down and cry about it, man. Like, <laughs> and, and, you know, and give yourself that respect that you're talking about where you just, you really have to, I know I struggle with that. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I did all yeah. that, but I got to keep going. I got to keep going. We're yeah. such, we can be such hamsters on the wheel. So, you yeah, know, I'm going to come to you to calm down. Yeah. Good. <laughs> well, definitely I'll yeah. uh, share some of that you know, the fire, the fire, yes. you know, the fire is really, it's like meditation. So just sitting around a fire is good for you. Yeah, it sure is. 
Amanda, I have loved having you on here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And so if people want to uh, book with you, like how far in advance should they book a tour at um, this point? Call any time, really. So yeah. you can find me online. I'm on social media, uh, Thrive Tours. Um, also, thrivetours.ca is our website. And um, yeah, so any I'm everything's custom. So it just depends on when we're booked. It's we're booked sometimes and sometimes we're available. So Okay. That's so great. And before I let you go, you have to tell us about your gorgeous hat. Oh, this thing. This actually yes. has a fun story too. It's a fur hat. Um, I lived in the Sioux for a very short time, like 10, 12 years ago. And uh, I went to get some secondhand things for my children. And this hat was sitting on the top. And I was like, that is so nice. And I and I got it for like next to nothing. And it uh, and it's like a furs made in Sault Ste. Marie. It's very like vintage. Um, and I kept it like in the closet for a long time, not really like feeling confident to wear it. But then I was like the last year or two, I was like, you know what? I love that hat. Why aren't I wearing it? Good for you. You're yeah. stepping into your queen. That's it's your right. crown. Good. So it's lovely. And um, I like to wear it. It's nice and warm. Oh, looks gorgeous on you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to put you in the back room. And as promised, there's champagne, keto treats, and you wanted dark chocolate too, right? Yes, that was on I your... Also, uh... I also wanted alcohol-free bubbly. Oh, no problem. Yeah, no champagne. No we don't uh, drink alcohol. No problem. There you go. <laughs> I've got it all ready for you. Thank you. I'm going to have my snack now. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Thanks, Amanda. No problem. <laughs> Amanda Cora. Wow, wasn't she lovely? She was absolutely amazing. I really enjoyed talking to her. I hope you guys check out her website, thrivetours.ca, and get something booked for winter, for spring, for summer. I think we all need to go uh, visit Amanda and Brad up in the Sioux. Thank you so much for watching today. Remember to check out brendabedome.com and grab yourself a little something something for the holidays. Use the coupon code get to know her for 21% off of your order. And please please go check out glamjewels.com as well and grab yourself one of our three little wishes necklaces. Have yourself a wonderful rest of the day and I will see you back here next week. If you happen to be watching this on YouTube, I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much and keep on showing the world your sparkle. We will see you back here next week. Bye for now. <laughs>